Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. You're listening to the RX Daily Dose. Today's episode is being recorded for Friday, September 10th, and I'm your host, Ian Parnagoni. We update this podcast for healthcare providers, medical professionals, and anyone who has an interest in drug updates. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media, including iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. All links can be found in the show notes below. So in today's episode, we have updates which include approval of Skytropha, a new human growth hormone, and approval of Invega Hafira, a twice yearly treatment for schizophrenia. We'll also be going over a new warning issued by the FDA on jack inhibitors. As always, feel free to skip around. I'm going to include times in the show notes so you get the drugs that interest you. First up this week, the FDA approved Lonapeg Somatropin, which goes by brand name Skytropha, an injection to treat pediatric patients age one year and older who weigh at least 11.5 kilograms and have short stature due to inadequate secretion of endogenous growth hormone. Skytropha is a human growth hormone approved for pediatric patients to take by under-the-skin injection weekly. Other available FDA-approved human growth hormone formulations for pediatric patients with growth hormone deficiency must be administered daily. Growth hormone deficiency is a disorder categorized by inadequate growth hormone production from the anterior pituitary gland, which is a small gland located at the base of the brain that produces several hormones. Children with this disorder can receive growth hormone to stimulate growth. The approval was based on a 52-week trial that enrolled 161 prepubescent research participants average age was 8.5 years, with growth hormone deficiency who had received no previous growth hormone treatment. Participants were randomly assigned to receive either weekly injection of Skytropha or daily injection of Somatropin, which is an FDA-approved growth hormone. Efficacy was determined by the increase in growth rate after 52 weeks of treatment. Weekly Skytropha treatment for 52 weeks resulted in a growth rate increase of 11.2 centimeters per year and was not inferior to daily somatropin treatment. The most common side effects of Skytropha include viral infection, fever, cough, nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, joint pain, arthritis, and diarrhea. Patients with acute critical illness, allergies to somatropin or any Skytropha excipients, active malignancy, certain types of diabetic retinopathy, and Prader-Willi syndrome with other risk factors should not take Skytropha. Children with closed epiphyses, that's the end part of a long bone, should also not take the drug. Patients taking Skytropha are also at increased risk of neoplasms, intracranial hypertension, fluid retention, hypoadrenalism, hypothyroidism, slipped capital femoral epiphysis, progression of pre-existing scoliosis, and pancreatitis. Skytropha may interact with glucocorticoid treatment, oral estrogen, insulin, and other anti-hyperglycemic agents. The FDA granted the approval of Skytropha to Ascendus Pharma. Also this week, the FDA approved a new paliperidone palmitate, which goes by brand name Invega Hafira, the first and only twice-yearly atypical antipsychotic injectable for the treatment of schizophrenia in adults. Before transitioning to Invega Hafira, patients should be adequately treated with Invega Sestina, a one-month paliperidone for at least four months, or Invega Trinza, a three-month paliperidone for at least one three-month injection cycle. Invega Hafira is administered by a healthcare provider every six months 
and dissolves slowly into the bloodstream after injection, resulting in continuous treatment and symptom control over six months. Schizophrenia is a complex and chronic brain disorder in which the symptoms and potential for relapse can impact many aspects of a person's daily life. On average, an adult with schizophrenia experiences nine relapses in less than six years, often due to missed doses of medication. Adults living with schizophrenia and their loved ones face ongoing functional, emotional, and financial burdens because of the disease. In addition, patients who experience more relapses may have more hospitalizations, which can lead to higher medical costs for patients, hospital systems, and payers. The FDA approval of Invega Hefira is based on the results of a 12-month randomized, double-blind, non-inferiority phase 3 study that enrolled 702 adults living with schizophrenia from 20 different countries. The results showed non-inferiority of Invega Hefira compared to Invega Trinza on the primary endpoint of time to first relapse at the end of the 12-month period. Results found that 92.5% of patients treated with Invega Hefira and 95% of patients treated with Invega Trinza were relapse-free at 12 months. Relapse was defined as psychiatric hospitalization, an increase in positive and negative syndrome scale total score, an increase in individual item scores, self-injury, violent behavior, or suicidal homicidal ideation. The safety profile observed in the trial was consistent with previous studies of Invega Sestina and Invega Trinza, with no new safety signals emerging. The most common adverse reactions in the Invega Hefira clinical trial were upper respiratory tract infection, injection site reaction, weight increase, headache, and Parkinsonism. Most recently, the American Psychiatric Association updated their schizophrenia treatment guidelines to expand the recommended use of long-acting injectables for appropriate adult patients living with schizophrenia. The FDA granted this approval to Janssen Pharmaceutical Companies of Johnson & Johnson. And finally this week, the FDA issued a warning about an increased risk of serious heart-related events such as heart attack or stroke, cancer, blood clots, and death with the rheumatoid arthritis and ulcerative colitis medications Zeljans and Zeljans XR, chemical name is tofacitinib. The trial that was evaluated compared Zeljans with another type of medicine used to treat arthritis called tumor necrosis factor blockers in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. The trial's final results also showed an increased risk of blood clots and death with the lower dose of Zeljans. A prior warning based upon earlier results from this trial reported an increased risk of blood clots and death only seen at the higher dose. The FDA will also require new and updated warnings for two other products in the same drug class as Zeljans, called Janus kinase inhibitors. Baricitinib, which goes by brand name Illumiant, and Upadacitinib, which goes by brand name Renvoke. Illumiant and Renvoke have not been studied in trials similar to the large safety clinical trial with Zeljans, so the risks have not been adequately evaluated. However, since they share mechanisms of action with Zeljans, FDA considers that these medicines may have similar risks as seen in the Zeljan safety trial. Two other JAK inhibitors, Ruxolitinib, which goes by brand name Jakafi, and Fedratinib, which goes by brand name Inrebic, are not indicated for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and other inflammatory conditions, and so are not part of the updates being required to the prescribing information for Zeljans, Zeljans XR, Illumiant, and Renvoke. Jakafi and Inrebic are used to treat blood disorders and require different updates to their prescribing information. 
If the FDA becomes aware of any additional safety information or data that warrants updates to the prescribing information for these medicines, further action may be taken. Changes will also be made to several sections of the prescribing information and to the patient medication guides. Patients should speak with their providers about their individual risk and evaluation. And that's all I have for right now. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll include all links in the show notes below, so please go back and check those out too. Please connect with me on any of your social media platforms and give me feedback on what you heard today. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. And as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.